At this time, let us begin our April 15, 2020 Wednesday Lord's Day, uh, sorry, Wednesday service with prayer. Father God, full of love and grace, in this year of 2020, we have ended our Lent, as well as our Easter, Lord's Day, and we are here before you uh, on this Wednesday service. Currently, though the coronavirus situation is continuing, may there be, we believe that your work of redemption still continues on. Help us so that you said that the word of life must go to the ends of the world for your work to be completed. So this gospel of your cross, your word of eternal life, help us so that we can uh, preach this so this coronavirus can be recalled. And may the road and uh, the windows of the gospel being proclaimed be opened once again before this uh, situation of darkness in each and every one of our families as we are gathered with our uh, as we are gathered together to give you worship if in our hearts because of possessions or health or because of this situation we are hurt or we are in despair at this time through your word, may you be present here with us, may you come here and find us, and may you come and heal our hearts, so all of our hearts that have turned to despair, may you raise us up, and may there be another day of hope that you bring to us, may there be your grace and your peace that comes upon us. At this time, as the word is proclaimed, may we inscribe this word deep upon our hearts, and may your Holy Spirit be here with us. And surely, may there be, in each and every one of our families, the filling work of the Holy Spirit, of your word, of your grace. And may we overcome this coronavirus. May you bless us and watch over us. We dedicate this beginning to the end of this worship all to you. May you, Father God, receive all the glory. We pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our bread of life will come from Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. In the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. I believe that you've all found it. I'll begin reading. Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, of those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through uh, to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flowed with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But all the congregation set to stone them with stones. Then the glory of the Lord appeared in the tent of meeting to all the sons of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people spurn me? And how long will they not believe in me, despite all the signs which I have performed in their midst? I will smite them with pestilence and dispossess them, and I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they. This is the word of God. Amen. The title of today's message is The Redemptive Historical Lesson uh, from Pestilence. The Redemptive Historical Lesson from Pestilence. And before this coronavirus, this is um, such a... I hope that we can have a time of uh, spiritual awakening. Here, 
in our scripture reading, we see that the Israelites, they were in the uh, wilderness, and they were at the 14th campsite, this place at Rithma, and this occurred. Now the people disbelieved, right? did not believe in God's power, and they denied going into the land of Canaan that was promised to them. And God said, I will send a pestilence to them. I will send a pestilence. Here, the word pestilence in Hebrew is deber, is deber. It means disease. It means like a, like a pestilence or more like an um, epidemic. Now, this place that is filled with milk and honey, this represents heaven, the land that we will enter into. In other words, to those people, to those people who deny this, who go against God, God will bring about this Hebrew word, deber, to these people, bring about this pestilence, epidemic, disease. Last Lord's Day, we had our we commemorated on that holy day, on that joyous day of our Lord Jesus Christ being resurrected. But despite all this, despite all this, we are only gathered with our families and still giving worship through videos. We are still in the in the same uh, circumstance. And before all this, this entire world is experiencing, especially here in America, it feels so severe, this coronavirus. It's all because of this pestilence. In the Bible, it records, within God's um, history of redemption, in different places throughout history, this, word, this pestilence comes about. And the Bible says that all of these are all from God. That's what the Bible says. This corona pestilence that's all over the world currently, if you look at the Bible, we're going to look at the different pestilences that appear in the Bible. And we're going to look at what we must realize, what kind of faiths we must have at this time. We're going to look a little into that. Number one. The fifth plague in Egypt was a plague of pestilence. In the past, of the ten great plagues, the fifth one was a plague of pestilence. Exodus chapter 9 verse 3 says, Behold, the hand of the Lord will come with a very severe pestilence on your livestock, which are in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the herds, and on the flocks. This word is Pestilence in Hebrew, again, is to bear. Now, of the ten, this was in the middle, the fifth one, the plague of pestilence. And of these ten great plagues, in the end, on the final days, on the end times, there is going to be it's gonna appear once again in the seven great plagues of the end times. In Revelation chapter 5, 15 verse 1. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues, which are the last, because in them the wrath of God is finished. See, in the end, we see of the seven great plagues, and then it is the end. See, God's wrath is finished, it says. But here there's something that we need to realize. Here, the plagues that appear on the earth, they're all wraths of God. In the past, the number of the plagues were ten. Ten. What does the number ten represent? The filling or complete. In other words, in the past, there was a filling wrath. Right? God, God's wrath upon the Egyptians. That was the ten great plagues. Also, in the end times, we see the plague at the very end, there's seven. The number seven represents perfect. In other words, when 
this final plague that's gonna come upon all humankind, we see this is a plague that'll end it all, that'll judge it all. No matter what, no one can escape this. This is a perfect plague that judges everyone. In the past, we see the first plague, the plague of blood. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 8, the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, burning with fire, was thrown into the sea, and the third of, of the sea became blood, it says. That's blood. Once again, that is a plague of blood that will appear once, once more. Another, there was the seventh plague, which is a plague of hails. The same thing will happen at the end. Revelation chapter 8 verse 7. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the grass, green grass, was burned up. It's the same thing with the plague of hails. And in the past, the eighth plague, the plague of locusts, this will happen once again. Revelation chapter 9 verse 3 says, Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Here it's, it says locusts once again. Also in the past, the ninth, the ninth plague upon Egypt, it will happen once again at the end, the plague of darkness. Revelation chapter 8 verse 12 says, the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them will be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. It's a dark night. And this will happen once again at the end. If so, currently, for you and I, this coronavirus that we are experiencing, before this pestilence, which one would it be similar to? That would be the fifth one, the plague of pestilence. If so, this plague of pestilence that came upon Egypt today, for you and I, when we are experiencing this, what kind of lesson can we learn through what happened in the past? See this, that happens again, that means the original objective is the same. That also means the way to re uh, remove this is the same. In the past, this plague of pestilence, what does it teach us today? When we are before this pestilence, should we, we should not be like Pharaoh and harden our hearts, but we have to seek uh, God's grace and God's compassion all the more. Our answer lies there. Uh, the Pharaoh of Egypt experienced the ten plagues without missing one. He experienced all of them. And why? That is, whenever they were before this plague, whenever there was an opportunity to repent, he did not repent. Instead, he hardened his heart. That's why. Exodus 7.13 says, Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord had said. See, so there was another plague because of that. In Exodus 7.22, it says, And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them. Also, Exodus chapter 8, verse 19, it says, But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them. Exodus chapter 9, verse 35 says, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not let the sons of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Exodus chapter 13 verse 15 says, It came about when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go. So we see it, and it's the same for us today. When we are before this coronavirus in all of our hearts individually, do we have this hardening of our hearts? It can't be like that. When we are like that, we are only going to be in a position where we experience another plague. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 to 13 says, For you and I, this is giving us a, um, a lesson. Take care, brethren, 
that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Today, you and I who are receiving this word, may we encourage each other, hold on to each other, so that our hearts do not become hardened. As this coronavirus continues on, in each and every one of our lives, we see, as, our, as we keep on going on, we have to watch over ourselves, help each other, so that we, uh, so that we encourage each other with grace, so we do not become hardened. As this situation continues on, what kind of uh, problems still happen? Not just infection, but just even our lifestyles, our, our survival, our means of, of, of living. We see that this uh, uh, presents a, a threat to everything. And when you look at the news, so we see a continuous announcement, do not go outside. Stay at home, but because of all this, we see there is a lot of um, you know there's a lot of uh, disagreements and arguments that happen within families. Things that people you know you know because you can't go out, because you can't go to work, you can't do anything. You only stay at home. So people you know get sick of each other. We see a lot of uh, domestic abuse, a lot of violence. We see a, a lot of hearts becoming hardened. Now as this go goes on. Let us not harden our hearts. We must be different as his children. As this happens, we need to more, more diligently read the word, read the history redemption, pray more diligently, and in each and every one of our hearts, we must be able to reign over this. And like this, in this before this fallen world, this this plague will stop, and there will be a true work of ex of the Exodus. I bless this upon you, name of the Lord, that we and our families may experience this. Number two, the second lesson. In the 41st campsite, in the, in the plains of Moab, 24,000 people died because of a pestilence or a plague. Numbers 25, 1 to 3 tells us, when Israel remained at Shittim, the people began to play the harlot with the daughters of Moab. For they invited the people to, sacri to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel joined them to Baal of Peor, and, they ate, and the Lord was angry against Israel. Here, this anger against Israel, Israel. What was the uh, essence of it? What was the method? Sorry, of the of the wrath of God. Numbers chapter twenty five, verse nine. It says, "Those who died by the plague." It says, "Were twenty four thousand." Point a plague, pestilence, epidemic. Twenty four thousand people. Right before the nose of of the Israelites, they were right before Canaan. Literally right over, uh, you know, right before the river. All they need to do is just cross the river. They're over at Canaan. However, they were tempted by the Moabites and they committed ad adultery and they, they idolatry. And then we see that this wrath of God came upon them. And at that time, God brought this plague, this pestilence upon them and judged them like this. For, for us today, We are here living in these end times, right before uh, Canaan, right before heaven, a little bit more, and we're there. Just a little bit more that we have to endure, just a little bit more perseverance, and we're there. But because of the culture of the world, it makes us commit adultery physically and spiritually, continuously pressures us. Therefore, in James chapter 4, verse 4, it warns us. You adulteresses, do you not know that the friendship with the world is hostility toward God? 
Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. It says, if you are friendly with the world, if you love the world, if you belong in the world, that it is adultery. Currently, because of this coronavirus, we can't go anywhere. We are only locked up at home. But through this, through this time, to all of the things that we have done in the world, all the delights, all of those things, we are forced to cut ourselves off from the delights of the world. But just like Abraham, may we only be the friend of God. May we have this godly training. And like this, may we all overcome this coronavirus, and may we all enter into the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey. I bless upon you in the name of the Lord, that we may all enter into heaven. Number three. After David's sin, a pestilence came to kill 70,000 people. The Bible says there was another pestilence. This was after David's sin, 70,000. 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 1 says, now again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. It's always this anger of God, this wrath of God that is tied to this pestilence. Burned against Israel, and it incited David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. This is, this was the start of God's uh, wrath. Now if you look carefully, what is it saying? David, because of David's sin, it's not because of his sin that the pestilence came, but this sin was not just his personal sin, but it was the sin over all Israel that he used uh, David and it made him sin, or incited him to sin. This pestilence was upon the Israelites. The problem was with the Israelites. Now, he moved uh, he moved David to do the uh, censor, was that censor, census, to uh, bring about this wrath. Ultimately, what happened? In 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 15, So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and 70,000 men of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. So when did this plague stop? When did this pestilence come to an end? That's when David David built an altar to repent before God and God recalled this pestilence. Just like this. The method to stopping this is only one. That is, in each and every one of our families, we must go to that threshing floor to go and repent. God used David and in the way that he judged all the sins of Israel before this coronavirus, we don't know, you know, what exactly, you know, started, exact, uh, but using a person or something he used that person to bring about this pestilence upon us. This is God's wrath upon all of us. And as we are here before all this, well, we say, oh, it's because of you, oh, it's because of this nation. No, it's not like that. But we need to reflect and look at ourselves. And this wrath that, of God, we need to realize that this is upon us. And just like David, may we get all of our families, and may we all build an altar of repentance. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. However, the Bible, using these three, talks about these three plagues, and there's a common uh, commonality between all of these. That is, the period when God brought this, was when there was a new redemptive historical flow. 
when there was a new flow, right before a new start, there was a pestilence. Number one, the first one, among the ten, well, what happened with the ten plagues that came upon Egypt? We see that after this, the Israelites who were uh, slaves under Egypt for 430 years, that came to an end, and there was the Exodus, the great work of the Israelites moving out of Egypt to start a new nation. The second one, on the 41st campsite in the wilderness, we see that the plains of Moab, there was a pestilence there. But what happened? After this, after this idolatry and adultery, after all this, there was the second, uh, with the second leaders, they, they went up into Canaan. They entered into Canaan. There was a new redemptive historical flow. Number three. The, the plague with David, what happened? We see that there was the, uh, after this plague, David went up to the threshing floor to repent, and there was the preparation for the uh, construction of the temple. And we see that th uh, this occurred. We see Solomon became, uh, becomes king, and there was a new work of uh, uh, the history of redemption. So David's life comes to an end, or near to the end, and he focuses on the uh, construction of the temple. And Solomon brought that about, right? This Temple of Solomon. Now, right now, even though we are like this, when all people around the world are experiencing this, God is trying to bring about an end for the current flow and a new start in the history of redemption. If so, when we are here before this, what are the things that we must do? The Bible gives us another answer. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 9, it says, Should evil come upon us, the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine, we will stand before this house and before you, for your name is in this house, and cry to you in our distress, and you will hear and deliver us. See, when this happens, even a pestilence, going out, gather in, temp in the temple, calling out his name, when we can't, then with our families as our, as we are uh, sanctuaries like this, call out, calling out uh, his name. You know, not just weighing it out. No, but the, the awakened prayers of repentance of the saints, when we call out his name, when we make that altar of repentance, God will bring an end to this pestilence. I believe this. However, our calling out, cannot be simply just for the end of this pestilence, no. But it's so that God's work, this new work of His history redemption, may come about. Our prayers must be like this. We must surely, when this coronavirus ends, there will be a new work in the history redemption. Now, I believe this. May we prepare for this in prayer. I'll not give a conclusion of today's message. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, That which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Also, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15, it says, That which has already, that's, that, which, that which is has been already, and that which will be has already been, for God seeks what has passed by. This is God's redemptive law or principle. Something that's already happened in the past, it'll happen again. So what happened in the past, we have used that to apply it to today. We use today and we prepare it for the future. Just like this, God's work in His history of redemption, we see that there's this repetition in God's work. And additionally, for you and I, just like 
what is written in the Bible. May we take those lessons and apply it to today, this coronavirus. For all this time, for me, my family, this nation, and our peoples, may we be able to realize the sins that we have committed and repent before Him. And after this pestilence, let's pray so that God's new work of the history of redemption uh, can be prepared. We have to work uh, in preparation for this. We need to do both of these things. So why don't we all find this next passage and end our uh, uh, worship today. God's work of this redemption, we must, we must follow uh, according to His time. God has already prepared a time in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. Let's all find this and read this and end t- together. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. One, let's read this all together in one voice. There is an appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather the stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. It's not just one thing that just stays like that and continues all the way on. According to God's time, what He has appointed there's time for kill, time for heal. There's times for, uh, you know, uh, tear down, time to build up. All of these things, we need to discern these things through the word. What time is it right now? Just like this. May we? What time is it right now? What kind of uh, period are we living in? We need to be able to discern between these two things. And when we are here in this dark time of the coronavirus, we need to be people of faith, preparing for a new time of hope. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us all pray. Father God, full of love and grace, you have. Even though we are here living before you, uh, in the middle of this darkness of the coronavirus, help us to break through this darkness, through the word that you give to us. Help us. We thank you for allowing us to understand what we must do to break this pestilence. Because of our sins, you have poured your wrath upon this world. And even though this is before us like this, what may we take what we've learned through uh, in the Bible and see what we must do. May we be those, we believe that you will bring about a new work in your history of redemption. And as we look upon this, may we take on our sins, our family's sins, the sins of our nation and our peoples, and may we take these sins and uh, uh, pray in repentance. Help us to be like that. Help us so that we can bring about a new work of your history of redemption. Help us to live lives that are preparing for this. Help us to be your awakened saints. Help us so that we do not lose our hope, but may we bring about this new work. Help us to walk with you, and may we live lives, blessed lives of victory. Help us so that our lives will be transformed like this. We thank you, and we pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ with sincerity. Amen. Let's give glory to God. At this time, let's all sing hymn number uh, 386. Him chage iro na 
용감히 싸워라 저 마귀 물리친 예성도들 같이 그 어떤 영벌 당해도 주 영광 드러내리라 예성도 걸어간 그 길을 따라서 이 거룩한 싸움 늘 싸워 이기며 이 세상 유혹 물리쳐 내 주만 따라가겠네 힘차게 나가자 큰 싸움 할 때에 주님의 강한 손내 능력 되시면 전막이능이 물리쳐 늘 승리하게 되리라 주님만 의지해 힘차게 나가자 이 거룩한 싸움 곧 끝이 나리니 저 승리의 멸류관을 내 주가 주시리로 Father God, we thank you. You have allowed us to come before you on this Wednesday night here gather with our families after the Easter Lord's Day here giving worship for, uh, with you, uh, to you. And through this, we thank you for allowing us to behold you with the word of eternal life that you have presented before us today. And for this coronavirus situation, help us so that we can uh, take the sins of our nation and pray before you in repentance. And help us to be the spiritual Daniels. Help us so that as we pray like this, may you recall this pestilence. And may you bring about a new work of your work uh, in, your wor in your work of your history of redemption. Help us to be uh, those who advance this. Help us to live our lives not filled with sin, but may we, at the end of this pestilence, be those who look upon the new road of the history of redemption. Help us to be able to go down that path in preparation. Help us to be your mature uh, children of faith. And with hearts of thanksgiving, we desire to give you these offerings to those who are suffering, who are uh, from the lack of possessions. Father God, may you, these are, may you accept these offerings that have been given with all of their hearts to those who are suffering from the lack of possessions. May you, uh, with your hand, uh, be upon them and bless them mightily. We thank you and we pray this in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let us all sing hymn number 455, verse 1 and 4. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
내 앞길 멀고 험해도 나 주님만 따라가리 Now it's time for announcements. Because this coronavirus situation is continuing on, um, as as the time goes on, may our hearts not become uh, you know scattered or, or darkened or uh, you know filled with despair. But instead, every single day, may we focus on our lives, uh, putting more effort in our lives of worship and of the word and of prayer. Also, in our health and anything else, to all those um, you know who are having a hard time, contact them. I hope that we can encourage them. Please rise, let us all sing hymn number one and end our Wednesday service with benediction. And now many people have given you these offerings of tithes and of thanksgiving, these offerings holding all of their hearts and, and their prayers. May you accept their offerings and to those uh, in our health, in our possessions. I pray, Lord, that we may not experience any more difficulties, but with your blessings and your grace and your life may, and your peace, may you fill us with these things. And now, may the limitless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the abundant love of our Father God, the inspiration and the fellowship, as well as the fill, filling work of the Holy Spirit be upon all those here today. Help us so that before this coronavirus, this great plague, this pestilence, may we be those with the awakened prayers, those who are living awakened lives of your word, help us to be reborn like this. May, the, may we be those who are the central figures in your new work of your history redemption. May this blessing be upon our heads, upon our families, upon the, our business place, upon our office place, upon this church, upon our nation and our peoples, from now until eternity. Amen. Wednesday service has ended. I hope that you have another night of peace. Thank you.